my father. Maybe we can sing it together. I long for you, my father. 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 I long for you, I thirst for you, my Father. 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 I thirst for you alone my heart cries abba father 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 my heart for you normally wear this fancy shirt but I was at a funeral my cousin's husband died and <clears throat> spent pretty much this after lunch on till just before we left to come here um, oh one of the things I was going to say and this is for Mallory because uh, we had both said that <clears throat> my uncle was at the at the funeral, and obviously, because it was his daughter's husband, and he's almost 90. I don't know. He's he's still doing really good, just amazing. And but he's he his you know my grandfather, his dad had always told us their last name was Lee, and had been that we were members, we were in line of Robert E. Lee, that that was our heritage. Um. And so just uh, like just a short while before uh, we left for Ireland, he sent me a thing and it was a long line of heritage and all this kind of stuff. And, <clears throat> and he, he, he was commenting on it. And he says, we are not in the direct line of Robert E. Lee. Um, and so he said, but I want you to follow the line on up a little bit. And um, so I did, and he had it marked. And this is an official document because it is an official um, record of still one, the, one of the sons of the revolution because of the line that it came through. Um, and, 
And in my line is one of the signers of the Declaration of Independence. <laughs> I'm going, what? And I still can't believe that I'm not related to Robert E. Lee because I can show you pictures of Robert E. Lee. And when my beard was longer and his hair curls like mine and it's the same color, I mean, you can hold him and go, what? But this was official. This was as official as you can get. Um, okay, I'm going to... I'm not. No, no, you probably are, but I'm... Yeah, you and I are no longer related. That's right. You know, except in the Lord, but that really doesn't count. You know. <clears throat> well, it is, yeah, the Lee family goes all the way back to... to <laughs> was Adam's last name Lee? Adam Lee. Really. They didn't have that on there. I don't know, but I know that yours does for saying it. <laughs> um, okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bust a move. I wouldn't plan on doing this, but I'm going to bust a move, and we're going to go ahead and... We're going to look at the story in Exodus. Um, so turn with me to Exodus chapter 4 and verse 21. I know last, not this last class, but last week we got into it. But I wanted to lay more of an outline for the first class. <clears throat> I want to say there are many, many things in this Exodus story that are really, really set the, the, the table for what's going to be served up. Um, and tonight, I just want to hit one, but it's one big one, okay? <clears throat> and that is in uh, Exodus 4 and verse 21. And the Lord said unto Moses, When thou goest to return into Egypt, see that thou do all those wonders before Pharaoh, which I have put in thine hand. But I will harden his heart, that he shall not let the people go, and thou shalt say unto Pharaoh, Thus saith the Lord, Israel is my son, even my firstborn. And I say unto thee, Let my son go, that he may serve, serve me. Okay. Uh, and if thou refuse to let him go, behold, I will slay thy son, even thy firstborn. Okay, so um, Israel is my son, even my firstborn. And I say unto thee, Let my son go that he may serve me. Okay, so we know from the scriptures, and we read last, last week, we read several places where it is to serve by sacrifice. And another place it says that they may, may go, in fact, I've got that one right here, that they may hold a feast unto me. Let them go that they may hold a feast or a sacrifice. Okay, so we're talking about the firstborn coming out of bondage, coming to, who is this calling? This is the father calling for his son. Yes. It is. It's the father calling for his son. And the father is calling just like the, he did in the prodigal. He's calling for his son to come unto him, okay, and to come out of the bondage. You remember the bondage, right, that the prodigal son was in. And he was in exile, or he was in a foreign land, just as Israel is now in Egypt, in a foreign land, as it were, exiled from the land of promise, but more importantly, exiled from the Father. Now, are you already seeing just a ton upon ton of reality of the prodigal son story building? I mean, we, for the most part, we could go right down most of this. And, and get it. But every story is going to hit certain parts and not other parts. But it's always going to expand. All right. So, so what you have here is you have the, the father is, is looking for his son, his firstborn son. Okay. And he's wanting to draw that son to him. Now, let me just, 
And what, let me. You know, if I'd use this Bible more instead of just setting it up here, I could make the page turn better. Okay, this, <clears throat> don't turn there. I just want to read it to you. Okay. Lord, help us. Uh, Galatians 4 says this. Don't turn there. <clears throat> because you are sons, God hath sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Okay. So I want to clarify something. Um, I'm not trying to correct your song, but in that song it says, uh, Abba, Father, you know, my heart cries, Abba, Father. Okay, well, this is all in line with what I'm, I'm here to share with you. This says that, the, that God, which is the Father, has sent forth the Spirit of his Son. So it's the Father, because it says sent forth his Son. Okay? So the Father, you can say, the Father hath sent forth the Spirit of his Son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. It is not our hearts that are crying out by Father. It be, and here's why that's important. He's wanting his firstborn and we're not it. We're not it. And, you know, the prodigal son could have returned and not gone through the process and not really seen the, thir the, the invisible son um, and still been a son, but now he was a better son. He wasn't a prodigal. He was a good son. But it wasn't the son. It wasn't Christ the son in him. What would that have done for the father? Now, be honest. Be totally honest. The father wouldn't have been much more happy. I mean, any father would go, well, I'm glad you're not murdering people. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know, or whatever. But, but this is trying to show us the heart of the Father, and guess what? It's trying to correct us and not just Kelly. Okay, because I was going to share this and I didn't know what, what the words were going to be. But it is very, very, can I say it again? Very, very important that we recognize that our relationship with the Father is, is the Son. Our relationship with the Father is not our relationship with the Father. Come on. You have to hear this because um, the whole of, of Galatians 4 up to that point is pointing out you're in the family, you're an heir, but you're not the firstborn heir. You are not the firstborn. He is the firstborn. And he sends the firstborn into our hearts crying, Abba, Father. You know why? If, if, that, if the prodigal or the elder son, the two sons, if either one of them had really emphasized the father, that might be different. It would, still wouldn't be the son. But they don't. They emphasize the work or they emphasize the inheritance or they emphasize some aspect that hacks them off because they thought they were good enough to be the firstborn. We're talking about the elder son now. We're talking about the, the firstborn, the elder son, firstborn. Come on. And we're, we're saying the firstborn isn't the firstborn. <laughs> the firstborn is not the firstborn. Jesus is the firstborn. Jesus is the son that the father wants. And my God, he puts him in us to cry out a father. But we, we, we muddy the water when we make it about us and our relationship with the father. We have to see. You, here's what, when, <clears throat> when God began to reveal this to me, I was still in Bible school. And, and he, here's the way he showed it to me. And you've got to remember, I was a dumb, young, punk, whatever I was. And he, he showed me that it was his son that he was after in me. 
And so here was one of the pictures he gave me. He showed me the father coming up and putting his arms around me and saying, my son, and, he's t and I, I knew he was talking about Jesus. And I was being hugged, and I said, this is good enough for me. I don't have to be the son. Do you understand that? Just let it sink in. I, I realized then and there, it really was not about me. Oh, where does that phrase come from? It's not about me, not even in sonship. It's, <laughs> it's always about him. But I'm going to tell you, this firstborn thing is going to take off. It's going to take off. And what you're going to see is, man, if, there, if, if you ever wondered throughout the Bible about God's determination to get his son, you won't wonder anymore. You will know that, <clears throat> you, can I, you know, y'all don't like me anyway, so I'm going to say this. You, you don't have a special relationship with the Father. You don't have a, a relationship different than anyone else. <laughs> Is that okay? No, it's, I know it's not, and I'm glad you didn't bring tomatoes, but you don't. You don't. I'm sorry. It's horrible news, I'm sure, and you're going to hate me forever. But you don't. The father isn't going, well, you little cute guy, or girl, you know what I mean? Come here, you know. <laughs> that ain't happening. He knows you by the son. He looks at you and he says, that's my son, the firstborn. And Israel says, no, I'm not. And he says, no, you're right, you're not. Did you have a comment? Okay. I think with the Holy Spirit, I think with Christ, and I think with the Father because those relationships are all based on levels of maturity that we're at, but the true maturity is Christ. The true maturity is Christ. It is, we're not building a relationship with the Father. We are learning the Son, and He, when, when we are no longer children, what is, what is maturity? God sending forth the Spirit of His Son into your heart, crying, I have a Father. That's the maturity. And, okay, so I was at Berean, and I also was at Shiloh, and Litzman said, you don't, you know, you're not special, you don't have a special relationship. And, and J.W. said it even more harsh. If he was here right now, he'd be amen in me going, you, yeah, say it, Randy. I ain't saying it for them. I'm saying it because I know for a fact that God put you to death. And he put his son in you, and he's looking for the son. And any, any other for example, if I start making it about me, that's a distraction. That's a distraction, you know. Um, so I don't know if that answered, but I know that I know that I know that the relationship that you have is in son and son in you. Robert. You can't have a better relationship. You can't build a better relationship. I write unto you that we, you may have fel we may have fellowship with you and you have fellowship with us, but truly our fellowship is between the Father and the Son. It is with them in that eternal relationship. And he's not trying to build a, an earthly relationship with us. Right. And I, you know, I know people, uh, sure, 
you know, maybe I'll move to a whole new level of being hated for just saying the truth. It really doesn't matter to me because this is still the truth. It is still the truth. He, okay, so here's the deal. So you got Israel. They, they're like the prodigal son in the sense that they've gone down to Egypt. They're down there. They're, now they're in bondage like the prodigal son. Um, they, um, they don't, they've literally lost any real relationship with the father. They, you, you know, they don't even really understand that. And, you know, Jesus said, I go to my father and your father. But he's your father because you're one with the son. He didn't, you didn't get birthed into him or out of him somehow. The new birth is Christ. You do know that, don't you? Oh, gosh. You know? I mean, I'm just, okay. What did Paul say? You're making me stand in doubt of you right now. But I'm telling you, it is, it is this. Okay. So, we, so we're looking at that, and we see so many of these things that are going on. And he's saying, come out in the wilderness. I want to sacrifice. I want to feast. Both of those terms are used. The father says, okay. You're my son, and I want to prove it. Come over here to the sacrifice. Come over here to the fatted calf. Come over here to the altar. Let's kill it. Look at it. Look at the parts. See what you're part of. Not, not get closer to me and go, you know, thanks. We're doing this bonding thing together over the sacrifice. We're not bonding over the sacrifice. We're seeing we're dead, and he's our life, and we're going to eat it. Okay, and we're going to feast over it because that was part of the thing that it said that we let a, let my son go that he may sacrifice unto me, but he's going to be the sacrifice. And one of the things we're going to find out is that the firstborn you don't you don't want to be the firstborn unless you're ready. I'm serious. You don't want to be. Now, it's a it's one of the highest positions, but you don't want to be that. All right, so, so you look at that situation and you compare that to the prodigal son and the father is waiting, he's longing for his son and you get that same feeling with, with the father out, you know, trying to draw the son out. Let my son go, let him come unto me. Let it be about sacrifice. Let, let he and I feast over the, the cross, over the altar. And as I looked at it, the, I felt like the Holy Spirit said to me, we think that the bondage and the, and the, the only issue is that Israel, I mean, that Egypt has his son in bondage. But it was Israel who had the son in them. And he was in bondage to them. And if the father couldn't get his son out of them, and he's crying out really literally to Israel though, I need you, like the prodigal, I need you to let my son go out of you. To, you know, not leave, go out, but to let him come forth. I need you to not just be, you know, come back and think that because you're sorry and everything, we're going to be closer. Give me my son. Give me my firstborn. Well, the prodigal wasn't the firstborn. The elder son was. But the ring and the robe and everything that's going on him is saying you're the firstborn. And the father's thinking, when he's putting it on, wake up, you're getting the inheritance. You're getting the true inheritance, which is what? My heart. I'll father you through Christ. Anybody ever heard me use the phrase, I am a son of God by Christ? Anybody ever heard me use that? You know where that comes from? Because I'm not a son of God in any other way except by Christ, as far as I'm concerned. Whatever... I was before God decided to reveal his son in me. I was a lost soul probably in bondage, just like all the other prodigals, or just like Israel gone down into Egypt, and now they're making straw bricks for Pharaoh. And the father's saying, 
let my son go. Let the firstborn go. And he's saying that to the prodigal son. Let my son, the invisible son, remember what, what we called also the third son? Let him go out of you. But there always has to be the sacrifice. There's always an altar. There's always the cross. There's always that. And that's when the fellowship really grows. Because don't you get the feeling that the prodigal son was just like, you know, not sure what was going on until they started eating the thing. And he'd seen it and then ate and said, this is what that is. And I'm putting this in me. And this is, this is your son, your crucified son. This is the firstborn. This is the but he's getting all of that treatment as if he's the firstborn, but he's the father's recognizing the firstborn in him. Okay? So, Israel in Egypt, he says, you know, let, you know he's, yes, he's saying to Pharaoh, let Israel go, my firstborn, to come unto me. But he's saying to Israel, Let's go out and it's, it'd be just like taking the prodigal, putting all this stuff on him and saying you're the firstborn and then say, well, really, let's go to the altar and see who the firstborn is. Well, the difference is, I mean, the prodigal son got it, didn't he? Israel didn't get it. They missed it and they missed the lamb. They totally missed the lamb. They did. I mean, I, I've got a thing here. Oh, there's, there's so much, gosh. Well, we can go back over that in a little bit. But they missed the lamb. And I'm going to tell you, without that sacrifice, without eating that sacrifice, really eating it, not going through the motions, because the prodigal ate it and became the son. And, uh, and or or was able to enter into the feast of the son with the father. They ate it, and they forgot it, and they made it about the blood. We talked about this. And they made it about us being free. We're saved. And the, the firstborn, his son never came to the father. He didn't. He never came. And God is talking just like to the prodigal like look you're in the family you have the son in you I'm trying to draw him out he's saying to Israel look you have the son you're in the family you are the seed of Abraham but let my firstborn go let my son go you're putting him in bondage you're keeping him hid in you. You're holding him back. You're living whatever your life is and hoping God will come save you from bondage when I call my son out of that. I call my son out of Egypt, but I call my son out of you too. And they never let him go. They never let the firstborn go. And they never ate lamb again until... They got ready to enter the land. So the ones who ate lamb in Egypt never ate it again. You know, I've made a, it sounds like a funny statement, but it didn't come to me funny. Some people have a mutton-free diet. It wasn't funny when the Lord said it to me because it meant some people hardly ever eat lamb. In fact, it's mutton-free. Mutton is lamb, another word for lamb. And it's, you know, I mean, thank God for gluten-free and all that stuff, but if we're not eating the lamb, we're, we are, what's going to happen? Okay. Israel comes out. They're of God. Amen? Israel was of God. They didn't give him his son. They continued to murmur. They continued to go astray. When they got to the promised land, they wouldn't enter in. They made an excuse about their children. 
They never entered the land because the land was made for the sun. It was. It was made for the sun. And, and you know what? You go all the way through. You get into John. And you start listening to Jesus. And Jesus says, you know, you think, uh, you think because you're the seed of Abraham that you've, you've got this? He said, no, you're of your father, the devil. I, when I make statements like this, somebody's in front of me. Some face is there. <laughs> this time it was her. And then I go, now she's going to think, um, no, I really do think you are. But anyway. <laughs> Um, Satan's past desiring you. He's got you, okay? <laughs> All right, so I need to stop on that. But is that incredible or what? Does it fit this storyline? Does it fit it really well? Is it going to fit a whole bunch of stories? Is it going to fit them to a T? Is it going to scream over and over as we move through the Bible, it's about my firstborn son. It's about my son. I'm a father, and I want my son in you crying. Abba, father. So quit ye like men. I mean, if anybody needed a father, I did. I was raised in an orphanage, for God's sake, and the stepfather I had was a monster until God let me lead him to the Lord. Everything, well, you can't even imagine. It desires so deeply. It claws to have a father. And I've told this little story before, but I, when I was with J.W. at Shiloh, I started kind of relating to him as a father. And I remember driving to Dallas. I think I was going to the airport, taking the Mockingbird exit, but hadn't taken it fully. I was just in the curve. And the father said to me, J.W. is not your father. I am your father. And he meant it. He meant it. He meant it. Well, I knew he was talking about the son. That was it. I knew that. I knew he's going, stop you trying to be fathered and let me father my son in you and you'll get, you'll get all the hugs and all, because, you know, he's in you. You know, you get all the kisses and all that stuff, all that. So you get it. You do. You get it from the father. But you know, I know you, father. You just really love your son. He goes, oh, shut up. Let me hug you again, you know. I mean, <clears throat> but it's between the father and the son. And all the work and trying that I did or you try to do to come into some special relationship like that is futile. It is. It's futile. You already have the relationship. Just let the son go. Stop being Pharaoh. Right? Stop being Egypt. You, if you're still in your bondages, then let the son go. That's always how he got the, the prodigal. And this story, Israel, it's going to be every time. And I just sat back after three, four, four or five months of this and just, I just went, you know what? If we can walk away from this, honestly, if we can walk away from after we get rolling here, because he spent... How many? 38 classes just setting up the prodigal son. <laughs> you know, if we can walk away from that and still insist on our life, then we got, we got a problem. And, you know, I know, I, since I'm not the pastor, I can't declare this over you, but you, some of you remember when I did, long, you know, different times. I'd go, Lord, if this isn't measuring up to your son, if this isn't flowing with what your son wants, let's end it. I used to say that. How many remember? I, I know because I've said it. I don't want it, and I know he doesn't want it. What's the point of this? So it just, what it does in me when that comes to that, I don't fear end it. It stirs me to want to go after him harder 
and with want, I want your son, I want your son for your sake. You see the jump there? I want your son for your sake, Father. And, you know, it just, it just, you, you get answered prayers that way. <laughs> if you keep making it about you, you go, well, why didn't he do anything? I've been serious. He's not doing it because you're acting like you're the son. <laughs> Just get out of the way. Say, look, I know you want your son. Clearly you want your son. Guess what? I want to give your son. Holy Spirit, sick him. Get out of me. Go. Let's go. Let's give the father what he wants. Form this, like Robert said, form the son in me. And, the, and it doesn't take the father and the son long to, like, get to know one another. You know, they don't kind of go, well, it's nice to meet you. It's, you're in Egypt a little long time down there inside those, you know, the people. He just goes, yeah! It's real. It's powerful. And it lifts you on a completely different plane. And it takes you, I, I'm sorry, it takes you out of fantasy land. And, you know, that was great for Disneyland, but this ain't Disneyland. This is time to, this is time to get what God's saying and take it to heart and then pray from the heart. I, I've given you a new heart and a new spirit. That's the new covenant. And pray from that position. Then let your new heart and your new spirit that is your heart, because it's my I put my spirit in you. Let that start coming forth instead of always being, well, I'm an individual and I'm just trying to feel my way to get to the Lord. Anyway, I need to stop because I will be running out of town if I say much, too much more. I have places to go if I get run out of town now. <laughs> Father, we thank you so much for your love for your son and the desire. And that, Father, yes, you had Jesus. You had him for all eternity before this. But for whatever reason, you wanted him through us. You wanted Christ in us. But it was Christ you wanted in us. And that, that was your heart. And you wanted us to enter into that fellowship. Since we're not God, Father, and we're, since we're not Son God, the, the, we're not God in that sense. You brought us into it as vessels with, tre with a treasure in us. That we could enter into things that were almost impossible any other way. And yet... Here we are. Here we are. And we ask you, Father, to move our minds, our teaching, and everything else off of ourself and to move it onto you, Father, and to say, Father, with all the passion, power, and ability you've got, bring forth your son out of me. Not for my sake, not to get me out of Egypt or bondage, but to get, that you would get what you want. Father, we ask, not in our name, not in the name of Adam anymore, but in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right, I went over <laughs> again.